Hello, I'm Bob Ross, and I'd like to welcome you to the 29th Joy of Painting series. If this is your first time with us, allow me to extend a personal invitation for you to get your brushes and, and your paints and paint along with us each show. And if you've been with us before, please allow me to thank you for inviting us back for another series of painting shows. We'll use about a dozen colors of some unorthodox brushes, and each show, I'll show you how to put some of natured masterpieces right here on the canvas. So I tell you what, it's showtime. Today we'll have them run all the colors across the screen right there, there that you need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, let me tell you what I've got going up here. Today I'm using an 18 by 24 inch double prime pre-stretched canvas, but you use whatever size you'd like. And I've just covered the entire canvas with a very thin coat of liquid white. The liquid white is designed just to make the canvas wet and, and to make it slick. It allows us to actually blend color right here on the canvas makes your whole painting life a lot easier. It's showtime! I thought today we'd just do a very simple little scene that I hope you'll enjoy. Let's start with a little two inch brush and a touch of the alizarin crimson. And we just load a little bit right into the bristles. Pull a little paint out, tap the bristles firmly to assure a nice even distribution of paint all the way through the bristles. And let's go right up here. And we'll take this old brush and just making little X's, little crisscross strokes. We'll just very quickly drop in just a little warm part in the sky here. Maybe we'll have a little pink in the sky. I sort of like that. And in our world, we can do anything that we want to do here. Any old thing. There! Doesn't take too long when you're using a brush that's two inches wide. Okay, without even cleaning the brush, we'll go right into, right into, little phthalo blue. <laughs> I like phthalo blue. It's a very warm blue, very nice. Once again, just tap a little color into it, and let's go back up here. And still using our little crisscross strokes, X's. That's all they are, little X's. We'll just apply a little bit of the phthalo blue, something about like so. Then we'll come back after we clean the brush and blend that together. Now the blue is many, many times stronger than this little pink area. It'll just eat it up, so be careful, be careful. All go away. If you want to make the indication of a happy little cloud, all you do is just sort of tap. A little stringy cloud just lives right there in the brush. And that easy. We'll blend him out and have a little stringer cloud. There! Let's see, while we have that on there, let's have some water in this painting. I love water. And it's very easy to paint in this style. Still water is always level. And I think today we'll have still water. So pull from the outside in. Outside in. Something about like so. All right, tasty. Well, I have a little brush going. I want to darken the corners a little bit. I'm going to take a little Prussian blue and just add in the corners here. There. A little bit up there. there. And we'll go over to the other side and add a little more and then down toward the bottom. And we'll put a little down here too. I'm just putting a little Prussian blue in each corner to darken it. And then the most fun part of this whole technique is washing the brushes. Since these are oil paints, we're washing our brushes with odorless paint thinner. Shake off the excess <laughs> and just beat the devil out of it. That's really the most fun part of it. Now, with a clean brush, and it's relatively dry from just beating it, we'll start in the light area, which is the pink, and we'll blend it all together. Something about like so. That's all there is to it. Okay, down here, we'll just do the same thing. There! But it's that easy, that easy. What's so fantastic about this is that anybody, anybody can put a little masterpiece on canvas with just a little bit of practice, a vision in your mind, and off you go. All right, that's working so well. Hmm. Take a little white, a little bit of the blue, and grab a little more of the titanium white. I want to make a light blue color here, mostly phthalo blue. And let's just tap a little color into the bristles. This old two inch brush will do marvelous things. Watch here, watch here, watch here. It's tasty. Just take the corner of the brush and just pull down. Something about like so. Straight down, straight down. I'll make it look like little distant trees live far back in the distance. A little more color and we'll just have it, there you go, I don't know, right there. there. In your world, you create any illusion that you want. But I want to keep the bottom light so it looks like mist. You could even take another two-inch brush, and I have several, 
and tap it. Really get in there and tap it and then lift upward. It'll help create that illusion of mist right down at the bottom. And sometimes, sometimes it's a lot of fun to put several layers. It helps create depth in your painting. And for that, we'll add a little more blue, but we make it a little darker. Add a little bit of Prussian blue to it and make it a little darker, but the same thing. And we'll come back and let's put another little layer in here. Just touching and pulling downward. That's all we're doing. That's really all we're doing. Something about like that. There! Now we don't know where that goes. It doesn't matter at this point. And back to our other two inch brush, and we'll tap this. I want to create mist again. Notice the separation. It's caused because of the difference in color, difference in value. And that misty area turns out to be your very best friend. Take care of it, treasure it. There! Good! Let's have some more fun. <laughs> let's see, let's take some black, some Prussian blue, and a little phthalo blue, it doesn't matter. We just throw it on there, crimson too, what the heck. Be brave, be brave. I'll put a little sap green in there too. It's getting close enough, we should begin seeing some color. A little bit of white. Don't want it totally dark yet. There! Perfect. Okay, let me wipe the old knife off. And let's get us a mm, fan brush. We'll use a fan brush. Load it full of color, both sides. Both sides. Okay, let's go up in here. And maybe in our world, there lives, does Now! It? Some little trees back in here. Now these are a little closer. You're seeing a little more detail, a little more distinct. There! And we just drop them in. We don't know where they go. Wherever you want them. That's exactly, exactly where they should live. Don't put too much detail in here. It's too far away. You're not going to see a lot of detail. You see detail when it's very close to you. When things are far away, you make out form, shape, basic color. That's all. Save your detail to the foreground. The lack of detail helps also create that illusion of distance and depth in your painting. It's very, very important. Very important. Okay. I'm going to tap a little of that. That'll help create that illusion of mist down there, too. There! Just slightly upward. Lightning. Just a little bit. See? Now! You know, when I was a traditional painter, one of the hardest things to make effectively was reflections. Watch how easy. I'll take some of that same color. We'll take a two-inch brush touch and pull down. Just pull straight down. It's most important that it goes straight down. Something like so. Straight down. Because of the noises. And very lightly go across. There! And instantly. We have some nice reflections. That's simple. Now here's something that's fun. You take a little, I just use a little white. If you want to create another plane in your painting, take a little white and lift upward. And it'll make little areas back here that looks like a whole different plane and the white will end up looking like little trunks in those trees. There! That's easy. Let's put a little water line. For that we'll use a liquid white. Pull it out very flat, flat as you can get it. Cut across, okay? And we can go right up in here, and we can just drop in just a little water line. Just a happy little water line that lives back in here somewhere. We don't know where it is, but don't know that we even care. Just let your imagination take you anywhere you want to go. A lot of times I start a painting and have nothing in mind but the time of day and the time of year. And from that, you can paint some fantastic little scenes. Don't worry about it. You don't always have to have a perfect vision in your mind of what it is you're going to paint. Imagination is, it's, it's like any other muscle in your body or like a muscle in your body. The more you practice, the better it becomes. Take some black, Prussian blue. I'm going to put some phthalo green in there. I like phthalo green. Maybe a little crimson. There, there we go. Tasty. Let me wipe off the knife. I just wiped the knife on a little, little old paper towel. I would just use that brush, a little fan brush. Load some color into it, both sides of the brush. Both sides, let's go up in here. Let's have, Mom. let's have a little evergreen tree. He lives right there, see? 
Just make a line, take the corner of the brush, make a touch. Make another one. And just sort of work from the center out. There, there it goes. It's easier to do them fast than it is slow, though. Here they come. Just sort of back and forth. I had a lady in class one time tell me it was like making Z's. The letter Z. She called them Z trees. So I guess that's as good of an analogy as any. From the center out. The center of the tree should be the thickest, darkest, strongest part of the tree. Because you have leaves on the back, you have a trunk in the middle, and you have leaves on this side. I have one more. There! There! there I have a little family of trees. You know, if you've painted with me before, I think everybody should have a friend. Even a tree. Even a tree needs a friend. Now, if you want to reflect those, just pop in some general indications of where they are. No big deal. See? Because we don't make mistakes here. We have happy accidents. Very quickly, you learn to work with anything that happens. Take the big brush, pull down, straight down once again, and then go across. And we have instant reflections. I just use that same fan brush. It has that color we made the tree out of it. And I go through cad yellow and a little yellow ochre. Immediately we have green. There. Right, let's go up in here. And we can take that green. Let's go back and put some highlights on our little evergreen trees. There. there. All right. Some tree here. He's saying, don't leave me out. I need some too. There. 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 Tasty. Now. And put a little liquid white right on that same brush because I want to lighten the color and make it a little thinner. A thin paint will stick to a thick paint. We mix them back up again. Let's go back up here. And we can just take this brush and let's just pop in the indication of some little bushes that live down here, right down in his little foots. Something about like that. How's that? That looks like a little island. Let's put some dirt there. there. Let's take some white, a little dark sienna, mix them together, cut off a little roll of paint. Let's go up in here. And we'll take this, and we'll just put the indication here of a little bit of soil, some dirt, some kind. So we've got to have a place if this is a little island for all this to sit on. All right. See there. That's all there is to it. Okay. Right, we gotta figure out something to do on the other side. Now, now let's have some fun. It's showtime. You know, if you've painted with me before, I like I like old big trees. Let's take a little bit of that color right there. There. Let's go right up in here. This is your bravery test. Take the corner of the old two-inch brush, and let's just begin laying in a basic shape here. Well, tree it lives right there. there. Right there. there. Big old tree. But he's a nice tree. There. Yes. Good. Well, I got that brush going. Tell you what, maybe let's do something about like this. And we'll just tap in all kinds of little, little bushy looking areas. You have to decide what lives here, how far it goes, how tall is it, how short is it, fat, skinny, in between. It's your world. And in your world, you make all the decisions. All the decisions. There. See, we just put some dark in here, so later on our light color will show. We'll just grab a whoops. Grab a little. There's a fan brush right there. There. Take a little white. A little bit of the dark sienna. Just want to make the indication here, maybe a little tree trunk, maybe a little more dark sienna. That's tasty. Okay, and right here. Just want some indications. I'm gonna put some happy little leaves on there, so we're gonna cover most of those up. Most of them won't show. We'll go right into that. Get a little sap green, a little bit of the yellow. We'll just put it right on this two-inch brush. Give a little push. Good shot. There. I see that well. Okay, let's go up in here. Now I'll put some leaves on here. Use just the corner of the brush. Just the corner of the brush. There. Okay. See? That's all there is to it. Just the corner. Think about shape and form. Drop these little rascals in wherever you want them. Wherever. You really are the creator on this piece of canvas. You can do anything. You can move rivers, mountains. 
create any illusion that you want here. Mm. When I go home, the only power I have is over the garbage. I, I can take it to the street all by myself. But here, I can do anything. Absolutely anything. anything. I decided I wanted to bush right there. There. And tell you what. It's showtime. You know me. If you've painted with me before, I like big trees. And we have one living in our world. Right there. 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 there he comes. We should have done this with a two-inch brush. It'd been a lot faster. There. There we go. Just drop it in. Wherever you think it should be. Good. Boy, I said big tree. I wasn't kidding. This is a monster tree. Huge tree. And you could have done it with a two inch brush just as easy, but much quicker. I like the old fan brush. It gives you a little more detail. Here we go with my smaller tree, because I think he needs a friend. There. It in. All we're doing once again is putting in the background color. You could put this in with a with a paint roller. It doesn't matter. As long as the shape was right. We'll come back and separate all of this with some nice highlights. Here's a little brown and white. We'll put the indication just here and there of a trunk. Just what you can see here and there. There! You don't see it all because you have leaves on this side. We'll go back to our little fan brush, go right through the cad yellow, yellow ochre, we'll load some color into it. Let's go back up in here and let's put a highlight or two on here. Evergreens are normally darker than other trees, so don't don't kill all the dark area in your in your evergreen. It happens sometimes. It gets feeling good and you don't know when to stop. There! And the base of the tree should be darker than the top big shadow areas underneath. And those shadow areas are where all my little friends live. In previous shows we've had, <laughs> like Peapod the Pocket Squirrel, my little squirrel that lives with me. We've had him on the show. But this is the kind of places that he likes. Let's take a little bit of color. Let's use the, let's use the one inch brush. We'll go through some, get some sap green and some yellow, load a lot of color into the brush. More sap green. That's tasty. All right, then we can go up here and we can begin picking out individual bushes, one at a time, one at a time. There. There's a happy little bush. He lives right there. there. You know he was there. there. And he's got a little friend named Colonel. He's right over here. There he is. So you can give all these things names, personalities. Shoot, it's okay. I'm gonna take the little oval brush, dip it in some paint thinner. I'll go through some midnight black and some brown. I'll once I'm gonna load it full of color. I can. Then I'm gonna take and with the other side, I'm gonna I got some light brown I made earlier. I'm just gonna go through. See? Like that. Put a little black in it, make it a little dark. Ooh, that's tasty. Now with that, I just wanna come up here and make the indication. You can't see them, too much of them. Of some rocks that live up there. there. Just some happy little rocks. Maybe there's one. There. Something, wherever. Just some indications. Then we'll come back with our brush we were making the bushes with, and we'll settle those right down into the painting. There. See? Now. They become part of the painting. There. There we go. Like so. And we'll make all kinds of little bushes and trees and happy little things that live here in our world. Good. Okay. Shoot. If we had such a place as that, I'd have to go fish it. There. I like to fish. But I'm not a very good fisherman. I catch a little fish and take the hook carefully out of his mouth and put a band-aid on him, a little CTR, and pat him on the tutu and put him back in the water and go back catch him again another day. But we'd have to have a way to get up here if we was going to catch that fish. We'll take a little of the Van Dyke Brown and let's have us a little path. We had to walk all through these bushes. Mosquitoes would get us, so 
And let's have us a little path that we can walk back in here, catch that big old trout or bass, whatever it is that lives in here. There! Take a little bit of, let's find some white, little dark sienna, mix it together, make a little highlight color. Just barely touching, barely. Let it graze, let it graze. That easy, that easy, about like so. Okay, there, now. Okay, let's put something on this side. You have something on the other side of the path. Now let's go on this side. Once again, I'm gonna take a one inch brush. Notice that it's straight down and I'm pulling it in one direction. It's most, most important. That loads a lot of paint and see it rounds one edge. You want to turn it, put that rounded edge to the top. It's most important. And then we take that, we go right up in here. No pressure hardly, just enough to get the brush to touch the canvas. And we begin working on shape and form, and we create a bush or a tree that lives right there. there. That's all there is to it. And there's another one. But do one at a time. I know, I know. Sometimes it starts working to get greedy. Do one at a time. One at a time, and put a little bright red on there. there. Maybe here's one right here. Oh yeah, it's got little, I don't know if you can see them, it's got little red flowers on the tip. <laughs> Sneaky. There. And we can go back over in here, and we can begin adding in just little things that come out here on the path. About like that. Good. Good. You got your brushes warmed up yet, and you ready? You can do this. You can do this, I know you can. I get letters every day from people all over the country that say they never believed they could paint, and they're doing it. Their friends and neighbors don't believe it when they look at their paintings, but they, they are doing it. There! I'm gonna put a little stick that is right there. There! A little old tree. Maybe, maybe, maybe this little tree died and he's naked now, just a skeleton hanging out here. And that happens in nature. There! We can put little arms on him that are still hanging out. Tasty! All kinds of little dooters. Maybe over in here. And these little details are what'll make your painting look a little more finished. Take your time when you're doing these and just drop them in here and there, there, there. wherever. Take a little light brown with paint thinner on it. And when you mix this, get it very thin. This, this should be almost like almost ink consistency. Turn the bristles, that'll bring it to a very sharp point. There, makes, there. Makes it good against that dark. Good. And where it's very dark, then we make little light trees. Where it's light, we make dark trees because they're, they both exist in nature. So you can put little, see now there's a little tree that lives back here, just has a good time. Looks out over the water, talks to the fish. That's all there is to it. Another way of making little sticks and twigs, take your knife, just a clean, clean knife, and you can reach up in here and just scrape right through the paint. See, and that'll make all kinds of little sticks. And let's come down here, we'll make a few more in here, wherever. You decide where they live. Sometimes these old evergreens here have old dead limbs hanging off of them. And you can do that just with a little flick of the knife. And shoot with that, I think. I'm done here. That easy. Let's take a little bit of the paint thinner, a little bright red, and we'll sign this little rascal. Really hope you've enjoyed it. It's a very simple painting that you can do. And if you try it, I'd love to see some photographs of what you're doing. So if you have time, take a photograph sent to us. Let us hear from you. Until then, from all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy painting and mission accomplished.